Well, hey, everybody. Jen Carvassi at Jekyll Bates. Today is Sunday. Um, I think it's maybe the 20th of January, probably. That sound about right? 2019. What we've got in store for you today is two patterns, or actually one pattern on two baits. We're going to do uh, a neon sushi pattern, which is pretty much just a little bit of a twist on a fire tiger pattern. We've got two Dual Realis G87 15As set up. They're the last two pieces in a customer order. The rest of his order is complete. These are the last two to, uh, to spray. So this is a pretty neat pattern on a really cool bait. These are obviously deep diving. The 15A will crank uh, 15 to 20 feet. So usually if you have a bunch of numbers in, in, a, in a bait or a lure, one of those sets of numbers is going to be a depth. Um, like the DT20 for Rapala, for example, is a dives to 20 feet. So that's, um, anyways, this is a 15 to 20. You can get it to troll a little bit uh, deeper. We're going to keep the eyes in, and let's get to work. Okay, the colors we're going to be using are the, the standard Fire Tiger pattern colors. The twist on it is going to be bright, bright red eyes. Um, and we're going to hand paint the details. I'm not going to have to show you on both baits. I'm just going to show you the hand painted details on one. But because we're doing a run of two of these, we're going to get all of our col colors set up. We're using fluorescence for these. Obviously, the Fire Tiger pattern deals with fluorescence. And then for our eyes, which will be the last thing that we do, well, probably the next to the last thing we do, we're going to use that bright red, that transparent bright red. So I've got my airbrush going. It's clean. I've got my PSI set to about 35 today for the initial primer. This We're going to do a white primer first. I'll set these other colors in the background. And one of the things that's a little bit different, because if you guys have been with the channel a while, you know that I usually try to work from light to dark. That way, I don't have to change colors as often in the airbrush. And it seems to blend a little bit better when you're layering different colors on top of one another. But in this particular pattern, let's get the gunk off of there. In this particular pattern, we're not going to do that. In fact, we're going to go from orange and then green. And then the last thing that we do on our base is going to be yellow. Now, I am going to also employ a little bit of um, a shading on the green because you'll, you'll, see the, you'll see the different things that I do to this bait as we go. But this is a fun pattern. It's a really good pattern in spring, shallow or deep. I also did this pattern for my customer on a couple of shallow duos, um, the 65 or 62 five A's, which is a two to five foot depth range. So we'll bring this down off here, covering the whole thing. And yes, because I'm going to be painting the eyes on this, that red, we're leaving the eyes in. And like I've said many times before, a lot of the a lot of the better baits, the higher end baits, and this is one, this runs about $15, $16. Um, the eyes are glued in really well, so you're doing more harm to the bait trying to pull those eyes out. Um, and it's not always easy to get replacement eyes unless you have an in on blanks. So these are not the standard round eyes like you'll find in Rapalas and Strike Kings. It's one of the unique things about the duos and the mega bass is that their eyes are completely different than everybody else's. It's good enough of a base coat there. I'm going to run a towel on this real quick and there's Casey sleeping. Casey is 14 years old. She is absolutely hands down the sweetest dog. And I can't say she's my favorite because I have two others, but I've certainly loved her the longest. 
So she is the best dog in my eyes on the planet. We're getting this cleaned out. The weather here is sunny, really cold. The ice is not melting. We had about two and a half inches of snow and sleet yesterday. We run just a little bit of cleaner through here. The primer is a lot thicker than the transparents that I'm going to be running through this. Fluorescent is pretty much, it's not real thick paint. Um, so I want to try and, it, white also will change the color. It'll lighten the color and I, I want the, the actual fluorescent colors on this. So because we're doing a run, we're going to do one color first on the bottoms of both baits. That's just the easiest way that I know to do it. Now when you're using helping hands, you want to kind of go back a lot of times because when you're painting in a certain direction, you want to come at it from a different angle so you don't have any white spots or blind spots. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but a lot of times like this, when you spray, it'll leave that shadow. So make sure that you're turning your helping hands as you go and that'll eliminate all if not most of any blank spots that were left. And we're going to run this up just a little bit, not too far, because we want a, a good amount of yellow on there. But yellow is the last that we're going to put on. And just run this down and load a little bit more paint. And again, I'm running 3538 PSI on this Iwata Eclipse HPCS. Run it up the sides a little bit. And I am going to clean this in between because now I'm going to load green. And if you put green and orange together, a lot of times it'll come out like a muddy brown. Maybe not quite that bad, but it will definitely change the color of your next one. Orange and red. Red's the worst. It'll really mess your colors up. And I think red and black are the worst colors to try and get out. For some reason, out of the chamber, it seems like it takes forever to get reds and blacks out. Well, hopefully you guys are thinking spring and thinking head. If you're still ice fishing, good on you. Um, but I tell you, I'm, I'm ready to start seeing some big girls. I'm ready to start seeing the, the spawning beds and have them in that heavy feed. Get some green out here. And we're going to do the top now. We want to come right over the top of this from the front and hit that. Hit the other bait. Just knock all this out in one. And you can overlap a little because you want to get that color fade. You actually want that to happen when we put this yellow on. Just make sure you get the front of the bait. And it's just about empty. deal. Now we're going to go just a little bit darker because we really want this green to stand out against the yellow. A lot of times the fluorescent yellows and greens are almost hard to tell apart. So we certainly want to be able to see the differences in our yellows and greens. Now for this we're just going to come along the top and not hit the sides like we did the other time. And that gets it just a shade darker. Oh, you wouldn't know it, but I did vacuum this morning. Now I've got that cleaned out. And then we're going to lower the PSI just a little bit and put just a trace 
of dark green on a stripe across the very top. Now that we have a couple of layers painted on here already, you see we just want to get that at the very top. We want that dark green stripe. There we go. What is going on here, folks? I got a little tiny clog going on. There we go. Now you can definitely see the, the accents, that dark green stripe, and then your fluorescent green off to the sides, and that's exactly what you want. And just try and steady your hand and run it right across the top. You know what I'm what I'm scared of here is that I have a clog and it's gonna shoot out onto the bait. I'm hoping that that's not the case. I'm about out of juice here anyway, so I think after I get this dark green, the shade that I want it here on the top, we're gonna, that looks about the same on both. And that's the other thing, when you're giving the customer more than one bait, you wanna make sure that both of your, or as many as you're spraying, have the same tonal qualities in the paint. So I'm gonna clear this out. I've got a little bit of clog going on in here. We'll come back after that. All right, took care of the clog. That's all gone. And set our greens off to the side because we probably won't need those. I like to keep the paints out so you guys can see what I've used as we go. Haven't used that one yet. We're gonna use this one again. You'll see why in just a little bit. So now we're gonna do yellow. So we've got our top and the bottom of this bait taken care of. Now, we want to fade in this yellow. And yellow has a tendency to coat better if it's the last thing you're spraying and blend the paint together better if you do it last. And then any imperfections that you get are a little bit less noticeable. And then you can see we've got that real good blend going in between the fluorescent green and it almost gives you a chartreuse look on the side of that, that bait. And you definitely get a better blend that way. So that's, that's just the way that I've always done it. If you guys have a different way of doing it, leave me a comment in the section below. And we'll take care of this other bait. And that's going to do it for our flow yellow. Get a nice good coat on there. There we go. And one thing I might do, I kind of want to accent these cheeks that are ahead of the gill plate on this. I kind of want to give them a little bit more of an orange tint to it. Might have overshot my yellow just a little bit, so. We don't want to go back into our yellow, so we come at this from the bottom and work our way up with the airbrush. And that way I'm just hitting that cheek right there and doing the same thing on here. Just hit the cheek. Angling your brush instead of coming at it straight on, if you're just trying to get a specific area, is a much better approach to it. And do it again. Come up from the bottom. Get that orange on there. Come up from the bottom. And also a lot of it is just getting comfortable with, with where you're placing the point. One thing, and I've been talking with a couple of colleagues of mine, and they use a side um, cup. So it's a side feed area. And if you're having problems lining up where you want to shoot because you're trying to look through this, try a side feed. Look for an airbrush that has a side feed cup and that way you can really line up where the point of this is going to your bait. Now I can usually angle. I've sort of compensated over time. It's just how I've learned because I've always had a top feed. But I'm real interested and curious to see what kind of accuracy I would have with a side feed. I've heard that it's um, it's a pretty good deal, so I might try that in the future. I'm going to clean this out. We're going to let this dry, and we'll come right back at it. 
quick heat set on this. It's still very tacky, but it's dry enough to where I can add the next couple of colors. Now we're going to do the eyes. And um, because the eyes have already kind of gotten green and yellow from the base layers, we really want to put on white. And what that's going to do, it's kind of it levels the, the color playing field, as it were. Um, if you put white on your patterns, if you're going to be layering a good bit, it'll give you a much better color pigment on your next color that you're going to layer over it. And we just, we don't want to do a whole lot on this. I don't have a whole lot of paint in my chamber. And I'm pulling my PSI back to about 10. So we have a, a real low pressure coming out of this. This is sort of where you really want to be accurate, especially if you have tacky paint and you don't want to cover this or tape any parts of it. But you want to make sure, number one, that you've got a, a decent flow coming out. And you want to aim for the middle of this eye. And you don't want to really cover anything but the eye. You can get the the eye cavity a little bit, but you want as little overspray as possible on this because you don't want a whole mess right there. You want to keep this fluorescent bait fluorescent. A lot of this has to do with trigger control. And that's it. You don't want to pull all the way back on your trigger. You want to let, kind of just gradually pull that back. And do it again here just to show you on the on the tape. And you see as you're starting to get heavier on your trigger, that's when your, your paint starts to splat. So just stay as light as possible on this trigger as you're doing your detailing. That's going to go a long way for you. If you learn that trigger control, and I, I preach it all the time, because that's probably one of the most important things you can learn. Especially if you're going to do more complicated, intricate patterns like cross, um, like some of the finer detailed work uh, on the gills. But just get that white. And then we're going to come back with red. So we're going to heat set this real quick. I'll probably leave the camera rolling for this one. Just heat set it for a second. Clear the rest of that white out of the chamber. Fill it with red. Now before I clean this, I do have a little bit more white left in the chamber. And the other twist that I do, you can see that I already have the white stripe on here from the, the last ones that I did. And um, let me run over here to the desk and show you guys. On these, you'll notice that I have a little pattern, a little scroll pattern going on on the top of these baits. And that's because I like to do things a little bit differently. So that's just to give you some ideas. Again, I would prefer that you guys don't copy exactly what I do, but it's to give you guys a little bit of creative juices so that you can come up with your own patterns. It's like, hey, I, you know, maybe I could do it this way or that way. But for this, We're going to lay this on here and then just run it just like that. Maybe one more down this back side. Just for a unique little twist on these patterns. Nothing wrong with that. I've always found that if you do things a little differently, it will attract some attention. And there we go. Fun, fun, fun. I'm going to get rid of the white that's left in this chamber and we're going to come back and do those eyes. Don't need a whole lot of red. A little red goes a long way. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I still have this on, I um, guess about 10. Just want to 
Make sure that's coming out. We want to do the same thing. Now remember, the red is a little less thick than your, oh no, look at that. That's an oops, we'll fix that. We're gonna fix that after we finish with the red. We're gonna, we have to fix that. That's an easy fix, don't worry. All hope is not lost. That's it, there's your red. Do it on the other side. Remember those coloring books you had when you were a kid? You had to stay inside the lines. Same stuff applies here. Just basics. Trigger control and accuracy. Takes a little practice, but you'll get it. Now look at the red eyes, isn't that cool? Gives you a whole new outlook. Love it. Looks mad, looks angry now. All right, now we gotta go back and fix that. So I'm gonna get rid of the red in the chamber and then let's fix that oops. Now I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but if you can see this mistake, there's actually two little divots, and I think I might have accidentally hit the tip of this nozzle on the airbrush with the side of this bait. That's the only thing that I can think of because the baits have been sitting here the whole time on helping hands. So um, maybe when I laid down my, my pattern here, that might have been when it happened. But because it went all the way through to the under stuff before we started painting this, here's how you're going to fix it because it's very dark and if you just put the transparent this fluorescent yellow down you're still going to see that dark mark so you have to cover it with primer again but you have you have to make sure you don't overspray that either so you want really really low pressure see this is this is the part of the video where you didn't even realize I was going to give you a helpful tip spray it on your hand now you see how that just splattered on my hand make sure that didn't happen you always test it out first Very slowly pull that trigger back, cover it with white, and do the same thing right there. So we had two little areas, and then now that you have the white down, you can come back with your yellow, and it'll be like it never happened. Now I've got the pressure at the same level. Make sure we have a good flow. Looks good, and now we just go back over. Cover that white. And pretty much like it never even happened. Once this gets a clear coat, and remember, we're still, we still have to put the fire tiger pattern on it. So the next step is gonna be adding black. And if you have a little mistake like that, you can basically correct it with this. And since we're gonna be layering one more pattern on top of it, we're gonna be hand painting that, this will disappear. So you're never gonna know there was an oops on it. So if you guys do stuff like this by accident, and it does, it's gonna happen. I mean, from time to time, don't freak out. There's always an easy fix to it. That took about two minutes, not even. Just put down your white primer and then put down your colors. And if you're working on a fade, if you really wanted to get detail oriented, you could probably put just a little bit more fluorescent green on top of this and a little bit more fluorescent orange on the bottom. But I think this is gonna look fine once we get that black fire tiger pattern on here. So we're gonna heat set this and then we're gonna finish up this bait and get it in some clear coat. So on this next piece, there's a couple of ways that you guys can go about doing this. If you have a steady hand, and, and I'm going to be doing it this way, you can hand paint all of this. This is just hand painted with a brush. Uh, you have to understand how to make markings and, and not smear paint all over it. But if you don't, and you want a really, really good stencil, here's your plug, Russ Allen. Go see Russ Allen at Insane Custom Stencils. You can find him on Facebook. You can find him at the website that I just mentioned. Um, you can also go talk to Corey Van Vonderen, who also does the, um, the cut stencils as well. They can do just about anything. Uh, Russ has preformed patterns. He's got a lot of them. He's reasonable in price. 
um, I, I've worked with Corey's before, and um, he's got some really good stuff out there, but either of those sources are phenomenal. You can also um, work with Jonas Summers from Lure Color Studios. And he's out of Australia, so if you guys are not in the States and you're looking for a great solution for stencils, getting them cut, if you're in Australia or if you're in Zealand or, or anywhere in the Europe, Asian theater, then definitely check out Jonas Summers. He's got some phenomenal stuff as well, and I have several of his. I don't care. I'll pay the, the shipping from Australia to here. He's got some really good hard stencils. There's also hard stencils, not necessarily for this, but I think that you could probably get hard stencils custom made for just about any bait if you, if you talk to the dealers. Um, you can talk to Andrew over at Cedar Run as well. So there's a lot of different solutions. I can link those for you in the description below. So check out those links. Um, but definitely get, give these guys a look for stencils. But today I'm going to be hand painting just like I did on this one. And I brought you guys over to this desk because I can sit down and kind of get comfortable and, uh, and work from there. So I'm not going to show you both of them. I am going to show you on the oops bait because I'm going to show you how you can randomly cover a mistake and make it look halfway decent. Now we did take care of the uh, the uh, slash mark for be lack of better term. We took care of that and we did that pretty well. Just remember to put white down before you put a transparent color or it's going to show through, especially to, if you don't have another pattern going on this. But on this one we do. So this is Bates 3 and 4 it's, it's, it was more, I think, than a four-piece uh, for this customer, but I have two others that I did with this. So really, with a fire tiger, you want to do one down. Make sure the camera's getting that. One up. One up, redip, another one down, one up, and then a few marks going back. And you can accent and accent. Maybe just put a couple. Now you see on, on this particular one, I've got some accents on the gill plate as well. And we'll do that here in just a couple. Don't want to overdo it. And then maybe a couple right there. And that's it, folks. That's your pattern. You can flip it over and do the other side. And voila, we have a fire tiger traditional looking bait that I call neon sushi. And we've got red eyes on it, which is a twist. And we also have this scrolling on top. And that's going to set it apart from all the other stuff that's out there. Is it going to catch fish? You bet it is. Thanks as always for watching. I really appreciate the company. Love that you guys are interactive on the channel. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time. Have a great day and happy casting.